Hi, my name is Matt Reynolds. I'm with Applied CAX, and today we're going to be showing off some examples of custom warning messages that can be built into NX post processors. I'm going to show a few examples of common situations where a custom post processor warning can help prevent issues from happening before code even makes it to your machine controller. On screen, you're going to see me set up a few operations with a variety of spindle speeds as my first example. Our first example is very straightforward. We have a machine with a maximum spindle speed of 18,000 RPM, and we want to make sure that our operators don't uh, use a program with spindle speeds that exceed the maximum. Um, so we're going to set up some operations that have 18,001 RPM, um, or another common situation is if you accidentally set your surface speed for a small tool without realizing that uh, the resulting spindle speed is far beyond your machine maximum. So we're going to run these operations through our post processor, which features a custom warning message. So we're going to click post process, select the correct post processor, my spindle speed, check. And we'll see that we get a warning message that identifies a couple operations by name and their programmed RPM. Um, the warning message identifies which operations to fix and instructs the operators to make the corrections themselves. Um, so this is a really simple example that pops up a lot. Um, there's a variable called mom spindle speed that we look at. You know, post processors have a lot of capabilities, but most people see them only as translation tools. Um, you know, custom warning messages, though, are programmable logic-driven alerts that only appear if certain conditions have taken place. So one capability of a post processor that is not translation is to make sure that all code generated is compatible within the machine's controller. So the post processor shouldn't be letting any bad, invalid, or dangerous code even make it to the machine controller. For our second example, we're going to see how using a custom warning message can prevent taps from breaking during tapping operations. Um, one common way to break a tap is by having your spindle speed and feed rate be out of sync relative to your tool's pitch. So one thing we can check on using a post processor is checking the pitch against the programmed RPM and the programmed feed rate and making sure that all of them are coordinated and on the same page. If any one of those values is out of sync, uh, you'll basically guarantee a tap to break. So we're going to set up some good operations, we're going to set up some bad operations, and we'll see what, what we can get a post processor to say. So we're going to select our tap feed rate post processor this time. And our resulting warning message says a few things. It, again, names the operations. It names the feed rate we used. Um, and one thing it will do is actually suggest the correct feed rate for a given spindle speed. And we'd also like to you know, train our programmers on how to do better next time. So we'll like to give them a little hint. Personally, I like this post processor warning message specifically quite a lot because pretty much every time you see it, you are going to break a tool with your program. So this one is a nice safety check. This final example comes to you straight out of our machine shop here in Portland, Oregon, where we have multiple machines. One situation we come up with is we have two different machines with two different controllers, and in order to program moves with cutter compensation turned on, we have to use different settings in CAM to make sure uh, the correct tool paths uh, come out. So depending on which machine we're post-processing to, we need to use entirely different configurations of cutter compensation settings. Um, and as it happens, these configurations are not compatible with each other. So if you take code for one machine and run it on another, you run a really high chance of breaking your tool and definitely damaging your partner machine. Um, so we'd like to sort of enforce certain cutter compensation settings. So our final example shows how our post-processor will catch whether or not we have checked this box for output cutter tracking data. Um, that is the key functional difference for our setup. So this checkbox right here is what we want to see unchecked. So if we regenerate and rerun this through our post processor, we'll see that this time the warning lets it through and all operations have been set up correctly. So again, you know, every time you see this warning message, you probably saved a tool, you saved a part, maybe your machine. You know, these are all examples of how post processors can really add capabilities beyond translation to your, to your CAM setups. And so, you know, if there's a programming style that you've always wanted to enforce or standardize, um, you know, if there are situations that you'd like to prevent, you know, bad feed rates, bad, bad pre-drills for your taps, um, anything you can describe into NX variables, we can turn into custom NX warning messages. So post processors are really great beyond just translation. If you have any ideas for custom warnings that you'd like to put into your own post processors, you know, leave them as comments, let us know. Um, we'd love to sort of hear what people would do with features like this.